Today's topic is interference. Interference is explained when we consider wave aspect of light and all the matter. Therefore, this phenomena not only accounts for light waves only, but sound waves, water waves, infrared and microwaves also exhibit interference effects. Interference effects are not observed all the time as the effect takes place only when the sources have a constant phase difference, same frequency and the same waveform. Therefore, the basic condition for interference to take place is phase coherence. Now, I have given a summary at the end of this lecture from wave particle debate of Newton versus Hagen to Young's double slit experiment, de Broglie's hypothesis to the development of wave mechanics in 1929. Therefore, kindly watch the video till the end. Now, according to principle of superposition, when two or more than two waves pass through a region in space at the same time, the net displacement is equal to the algebraic or the vector sum of the individual displacements. This will be more elaborated in the next slides. Now, in our next slide, I will show you some examples of interference effects from daily life. And moreover, we will also discuss in detail principle of superposition, constructive and destructive interference, path difference and phase difference then interference pattern and I will also show you some experimental arrangements used for interference effects to take place by famous scientists from the history. Halos of light around street lamps or the moon on a foggy night, light and dark bands of light if you look through fabric at a bright source of light, these soap bubbles and these glorious colors do not come from the pigments in the wing but arise as a result of scattering of light waves from different points on the wing meet in our eyes and combine to give rise to interference. So all these are examples of interference from daily life. As I have stated earlier, we will study under this topic principle of superposition, constructive and destructive interference, path difference and phase difference, interference patterns and I have also included some experimental arrangements used by different scientists from history to observe interference pattern. Principle of superposition. According to the principle of superposition, when two or more than two waves pass through a region in space at the same time, the net displacement is equal to the algebraic or the vector sum of the individual displacements. So these two waves, red and green, their superposition will give rise to this resultant, this purple color. Considering two, three points here, like for example, at this point, green and red both have the same displacement, three. Their algebraic sum give rise to three plus three equal to six. At this point, green has minus 2.7 and red has minus four. Minus sign indicates that these points lie along minus y axis. Their resultant gives the algebraic sum minus 2.7 plus minus 4 minus 6.7 this one. Again this point is at minus 0.9 and this one minus 2.1 their algebraic sum gives minus 3 so resultant is this one. Now these two diagrams show constructive and destructive interference. Waves that combine in phase add up to give bright fringes. This is called constructive interference and sources are said to be coherent. In this case, see, this crest overlaps with crest. So path difference is zero. So constructive interference will take place and we will get bright spot. Here in this case, crest lies over trough. So destructive interference will take place and we will get dark band or dark spot waves that combine 180 degree out of phase. These two are 180 degree out of phase or lambda by 2 path difference. So when waves combine 180 degree out of phase, they cancel out each other and yield dark fringes. They are coherent still as the sources have a constant phase difference, the same frequency and the same wave wave form. Again, I have drawn this sketch for showing the constructive and destructive interference at different points 
from two coherent sources of the waveforms from two coherent sources for constructive interference path difference is an integral multiple of wavelength and for destructive interference path difference is an odd multiple of wavelength now these dark lines show crests and lighter or thin lines show troughs and it can be seen that when path difference is zero like here at this point these this all red points wherever they lie it can be seen that their path difference between two wave fronts it is zero so we will get bright bands here this is central maximum m is equal to zero this is first order second order on both side we will get maxima and minima minima lies on these lines blue points so this crest and this crest so path difference is zero here trough from one wave and trough from another wave they overlap again path difference is zero so it will be constructive interference all over there here here all red lines and in this case see this blue point one crest and one trough overlap each other so they will interfere destructively because path difference here is lambda by 2 see path difference between one crest and one trough is lambda by 2 and path difference between consecutive crests or between two consecutive troughs is one lambda again this shows interference pattern bright and dark fringes so interference effects are observed with all types of waves like light radio acoustic water gravity and matter waves now how to differentiate between path difference and phase difference path difference is the extra distance extra distance traveled by one of the waves compared with the other so in these two sinusoidal waves the path difference is lambda by 4 and phase difference between these two waves is pi minus pi by 2 pi by 2 which is 90 degree because pi is 180 degree now here we observe interference pattern there are different uh, types of experimental setup to view or observe interference fringes for example uh, this is another experimental setup michelson interferometer newton rings are also examples of interference fringes but here you may see that only experimental arrangement is different so this is just a magnified view of interference pattern so these are different arrangements used by different scientists. This arrangement is known as Michelson interferometer. And these are Newton's rings. And this is the experimental setup to observe these interference patterns. Whether the light is a particle or a wave, the debate on this topic first began in the 17th century. Newton was convinced from different interpretations of the experimental evidences that light was a particle. Hagen, on the other hand, said that light is a wave. According to Newton's corpuscular theory, every source of light, like the sun or a candle, emit large number of particles called corpuscles in a medium surrounding the source. These corpuscles travel in straight lines with high velocity in all possible directions. When these particles enter our eyes, an image of the object or sensation of vision is produced. Hagen's principle states that every point on a wave front, see this plane wave, every point, these circular red dots on a wave front give rise to secondary wavelets, these small waves, which spread out in all the directions with the speed of a wave. The new position of the wave front at time t can be determined using Hagen's principle. This new wave front is formed by drawing a line tangent to all the wavelets. This line is tangent to all the wavelets. 
This wave particle debate of light was resolved by famous physicist Thomas Young's double slit experiment. On the basis of interference pattern observed on the screen in this experiment, Young arrived at a judgment that light must be a wave as interference is a property of waves. Lovely's question was, if photons exhibit wave and particle properties, would all matter do so as well? De Broglie postulated the wave nature of electrons. Einstein appreciated his brilliant idea. De Broglie's theory was proved to be correct after Davison and Germer performed the double slit experiment in 1927 using electrons. An interference pattern was observed by the reflected electrons. Hence, de Broglie's theory of matter having wave properties proved to be correct. He associated waves with matter because electron is a particle, material particle. Due to his revolutionary findings, de Broglie won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1929. His work marked the beginning of the development of wave mechanics. Now, examples of wave behavior of matter. Some of the phenomena that account for wave behavior of matter, particles and electromagnetic radiations are reflection, refraction, total internal reflection, diffraction, interference, polarization, scattering or dispersion through a prism, and fiber optics, etc. Moreover, standing waves or stationary waves produced in musical instruments like guitar, waves in an open pipe when one end is closed or both end closed, resonance, and some of the devices that work on the principle when electromagnetic radiation behave like waves are endoscope, binocular, and periscope, etc. Summary of wave particle debate of matter. So just to recap briefly, Newton said light is a particle, whereas Hagen said light is a wave. Young's on the basis of double slit experiment proved that light is a wave. Now Planck's quantization and Albert Einstein's quantization of energy proved particle nature of electromagnetic radiations. It means all these scientists were conclude that light sometimes behave as a particle and sometimes it behaves like waves. This was the reason that de Broglie then put forward his question that if light or electromagnetic radiation has dual nature, does all matter do so as well? It was later on proved that not only electromagnetic radiation, but all the matter has actually dual nature. This is all about wave particle duality.